All right, lock and load, you guys. Let's do it. You got you got notes. Oh come on! Oh, God, I'm okay. talking to the greatest no. living director. I gotta. No, I gotta but come you see, you're supposed to be talking. Yeah, well, I also have some anecdotes about the weather. In case Excellent. All right. <laughs> Hey, come on, everybody, move on out. I feel, whenever I'm on a set, I'm still yelling, I'm not directing this. You could direct it. Let's Please. get a crane, let's get a push down. <laughs> oh, boom. <laughs> First time I saw him was in uh, a Luca's film, uh, Call Me By Your Name. Yeah. And so, you know, and I'm a great admirer of Luca, and I love the picture. I always talk about, um, performances, but they aren't really, they're like behavioral, where you don't see the acting. You know what I mean? Yes. And so um, I connected there, and I saw Dune, mm -hmm. you know, which I enjoyed, and I started to see a sense of rage, mm -hmm. you know. And then they said, they, Chanel asked me to do this spot for Bleu. Uh, which you had already done. I had done years ago. Right. Yeah. At the first one. They said they had this young gentleman named Timothy Chalamet, and I said, ah, that one I know. And we had some kind of a dinner and talk, mm -hmm. et cetera. We had a plan for the, I guess you call it a commercial. I don't know what it is. It's Story. like a little narrative. I, I feel it's not evocative of other commercials and perfume commercials in a good way. In a good way, yeah. I think. It's somewhat different than that. And, and so it's a, it's a story in yeah. a way. Um, but how to break it through. You know, my latest film was over three hours. This, 60 seconds. And it's, oh, Marty, it's only, six, only 60 seconds. The thing about 60 seconds is it's harder. Condensed. Condensed, and every frame counts. Mm -hmm. Every frame. Mm -hmm. You know, I know we're talking digital, but there's still frames in digital. Mm -hmm. But I mean, one frame more, two frames, that's the way we're editing this thing. Add two frames, take away a frame. You know, juxtaposition of images, all this sort of thing. So it's not an, uh, a facile way of working. It's actually, I find these much more intense. Yeah. Um, and it's a, they're real, um, workouts. More as challenging. In yeah, some more way. challenging. Yeah. The narrative itself was about the film actor and being on the road. And um, uh, one of the things we referred to was the great uh, uh, short film by Federico Fellini. Toby Dammit. Toby Dammit. Yeah. And right. I showed it to you. And uh, uh, I said, let's capture some of that feeling, you know. Uh, that's that's a, one of my favorite interactions with you, as you said. You've seen Toby Dammit, right? And I thought, no. this Fellini, sh this that's obscure right. Fellini short. No, I haven't. But I quickly, quickly got onto it. With that, as an inspiration, we, we uh, came up with a story somehow. It developed into a kind of uh, story. And right. how that happened, I'm not quite sure. No, but it's, I, I'm so grateful <laughs> that it developed. But I, love, I felt so honored that you brought, uh, because um, I just didn't feel like a commercial. And I guess the fear as an actor, that's why I was so excited that you agreed to do it too, is that you, know, you don't want it to feel, you know, know. Uh, whatever, like a product. I know. This was a total dream, total short film. What I walked away with, the most, we haven't even gotten a chance to speak about it, but I was just so shocked about how unprecious you were about setups and uh, how quickly we would fly. Not to say there wasn't enormous attention to detail. It was just so fascinating when filmmakers start out, and I've worked with a lot of young filmmakers that are enormously precious and maybe plotting sometimes. And here we were just like going, you know. Well, it was uh, planned beforehand. Yeah, to, to words, fly I, like that? Well, not to fly like that, but I was glad it flew. Yeah. But no, the, the shots were designed. Or at least, the, I like to call it like a philosophy of a shot. Mm -hmm. Should this be a moving shot at all? Right. Or should it be static? And if it's static, what the hell size are you in the frame? Right. Is it from the waist up? So that was here? all yeah. basically planned. Yeah, I mean, I mean, then when you get into the, like uh, looking out the window and you see the... Uh, the uh, billboard? The billboard. I know you're going to walk towards camera, but where do you stop? Um, but I didn't know there was a shot list, basically. I have it myself. Do you always sure. work like that, basically, or no? Well, back, features? yes, back in the, uh, when I started doing uh, my first films, I would draw everything. Wow, I that had, sounds time intensive. Yeah, well, it was by so, myself anyway. I was always by myself. So, Nobody oh, wanted oh to be God, with me. That's, Nobody another, wanted, that's another story. That's another story. I was always in a room by the myself. The taxi driver was literally there. Literally that. across the street. I designed the whole picture and drew all the pictures right across the street at the St. Regis Hotel in that, out that window. I spent a lot of time doing that because First of all, I like the idea of how to tell a story with pictures, right? But it also, because it was so low budget, mm -hmm. I had to really- Have a plan? Have a plan so that it could be changed. Had you had an experience where you didn't have a plan? 
Have you uh, seen yes, that? later on I tried. I tried okay. uh, another film, but it, I seem to work better with a plan. <laughs> I really do. It's like showing up memorized or showing up unmemorized. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. You probably exactly. don't do with a lot of people that are unmemorized. No, it's so. true, but even memorized is one thing. Knowing it's another, right? Yeah. As long as you know yeah, exactly. it. As long as you exactly. know it. Well said. You know, you can start fooling around with stuff. And, yeah. But I tried a different experiment once, and it didn't work for me. But over the years, the drawings became notes and little drawings in the margins of the of the script, or let's say in Goodfellas, it actually was put into the script. How so, like shot, shot lists? Or, or much. that the actors would go off of in some way, or no? No, irrelevant? no, yeah. no. As long as I had actors who could, if I had a specific shot I wanted to get, which was complicated, as long as uh, he or she would be able to behave uh, unencumbered in the frame. Mm -hmm. You know, if I'm asking them to look backwards and walk forwards at the same time, and uh, at, I found that to be a problem. Mm -hmm. and then I right. may have adjusted the shot. You follow? Right, right. Depending on what's more important, uh, their faces and what they're doing, or this particular move to the left or right. But it's amazing in After Hours and Goodfellas, there's shots sometimes that push in rapidly on someone, and they're doing yeah. something very natural behaviorally. Obviously, De Niro's one of the greatest ever, but you'll be, a camera's flying at him, and he's, like, yes, picking yeah. his teeth or something, yes, exactly. you know, he's not yeah. disturbed. Yeah. And, yeah. uh... That's why I was so seriously inspired working with you is that it was so unprecious and the commercial is quick. It's really gripping. Everyone I've showed it to, the four or five people, whatever, they go, oh my God, this is like, this well, is well, fast, well, the, the thing is, the, the situation was perfect for yeah. that. Yeah. You know, if it was something else, yeah. like if you see Killers of the Flower Moon, yeah. which you saw, I mean, in certain cases, you just hold the camera. Don't move right. it. Right. You know? Now, with Shock with Killers too, though, it's very engaging. I'm shocked only because of the the runtime, but it's you're gripped the entire time. I, and that was a big gamble. It's amazing, uh, pacing wise. All those characters feel out of that era. Leo, most uh, of I know, all. You know? Well, well, I tell you, well, you know what it's like. You're yeah. in a place like that. You learn to live in it. Yeah. And you become part of it. Yeah. And uh, I mean, yeah, it was a long shoot, but a lot of my pictures lately have been long. Right. That's why I wanted to do this. I wanted to change the style right away. Right. I had to freshen up. Right, right. I had right. to change it. Doesn't mean go faster. I had to think differently. Right. You know, to, to force myself to think differently. No, I loved it. It was lean, it was muscular, and it was like way more running gun than I ever would have yeah. thought. I wanted to be free and open. Yeah. It was constructed, as I say, yes. and designed. Right. But. Yeah, but there's room to play. Yeah. That's what I loved. Um, from my perspective, sometimes direction can be really explicit. And then when something's really explicit, it's quite hard to get to. I can't you know? imagine how, how you do yeah, it. Yeah, because you kind of lose your mind, you know? But when some, And I felt you nudging, which is really the best, because yeah. if you're getting sort of gently... And then if you don't get there, I felt that too. If I was like, it's not going to work, fuck it, we're going to go do something else. Do something know? else. Yeah. Well, because... But you see, the nature of this spot lent itself to that because of um, uh, the spontaneity of the show, let's say, or the backstage chaos, mm -hmm. you know? Look, being specific and blocking specifically, it's another way of artistic expression. Right. You know, and there are times when I have to do it. Right. You know, but this particular story didn't need that. Yes. You know, I, I think we, we hit we hit the uh, pacing right. Getting in the, the van was hard when we hit you with the camera. But so. that was used. That's what yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah. I was laughing the first time I saw this podcast. I thought, oh, yeah. wow, this is, again, unprecious. Is like, well, this works? Great. We're going we're gonna to throw it yeah. in. Yeah. yeah. The thing is that it really hit nicely. I mean, not the camera. It was like, bang. <laughs> that makes and you then, think it was on purpose. No, okay. And then suddenly you throw in the back of the car. You yeah. look up. And, yeah. You know, it kind of indicates to the audience that what you're going to see for the next minute, minute and a half, whatever it is, is something very different and special. Yeah. I shot a movie in New York seven years ago on the streets, whatever, and it was so wonderful to, to rap and then walk home. It feels more like a creative exercise, I guess. Well, the city has the, and they always use the cliche of the energy, but it does have the energy. Right. It right. simply does, because everybody's on top of each other. Right. I mean, look at it, all the buildings on top of each other. It's different from L.A. L.A. is spread out. You get the car. Back in 1971, when I learned to drive, I had to learn to drive out there. Mm -hmm. It was wonderful. It's made for cars. Yeah. You know, and you just turn the music up. Your uh, your edge rots out there, though. Yeah, it tended to, but luckily I was able to do films like Taxi Driver, and then right. mainly because they saw Main Streets and they wanted De Niro and myself together on right. that film. But it was a different New York. Oh, that was the New York of, um, you know, uh, Ford to City, Drop Dead. We shot it in the summer of 76. It was the most, apparently the most... Violent? No. Well, well, violent, yes. But you see, for me, violence here is always the same. I, I, I grew up here. 
I, I'm always walking in the street a certain way, or I know not that. Yeah, you're always checking your shoulder. <laughs> so the thing about it is, no, I, I, I just know I could see a person coming down that may not, because I grew up downtown on the, in a rough Lower area, side, right? in the Lower East Side, when the Bowery was the Bowery, and right. it was pretty scary growing up as a kid. Right. But um, what had happened was that the city was going to go bankrupt, and they asked the, uh, from my long story short, yeah. yeah, asked for federal and The Bronx is on fire insurance schemes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was that buildings were collapsing. That right. was that famous uh, yeah. building that collapsed uh, that we put in vinyl. It was uh, th apparently the lowest ebb that the city has ever been in. Was that? Was that mid when we were shooting? It was a perfect, perfect cinematic background. <laughs>